These correlation plots can all be produced with a single line of code. And in this video, I will show you which powerful functions can do this. Welcome back to the Data Digest. If you want to analyze a new or complex dataset and you're looking for some interesting patterns, there are some extremely helpful functions that allow you to report correlations between the variables very quickly. I will cover the core plot package, the ggalli package and its pairs and ggcore functions, as well as the coregram and psych package and the geomtile function from ggplot. Let's get started with the R code so that you can decide which function works best for your needs. Let's start with the core plot function. First, install and load the core plot package. In order for the core plot function to work, it needs a correlation matrix. So if you just use it on a data set like empty cars, you will get an error message. The function will tell you this because the first function argument is actually core. And with the core function, you turn the empty cars data set with all its variables into a correlation matrix that gives you the correlation of one on the diagonal and then from minus one to plus one for negative or positive correlations. If you try it out on the iris dataset, you also get an error message because for the correlation function to work, all the variables have to be numeric. And in the iris dataset, the last column is the species column. And therefore you have to specify that you only want to calculate the correlation for the first four columns. You can also exclude the fifth column or select the columns in this way. If you're confronted with a new function that you're not familiar with, it's always helpful to use the question mark or help function because then it will tell you how you use the function and what the basic arguments are. So there's a method function argument and by default it will produce circles as you can see here. And then you also get explanations on all the arguments which is quite a long list for this function and also very helpful at the end you always get examples that you could just copy into the R script and try it out for yourself. In the next minutes I want to show you various of the following function arguments. These are the default values, so you get circle for method, a full correlation matrix for type, and the text label position is on top and left, with the order being the original of the data set. As you can see here, you can choose from circles, squares, ellipse, get the number of the correlation coefficient, a pie chart, or a color only, which does not vary in size. The darker the color and the more filled out the shape, the stronger the correlation, blue for positive and red for negative. Exception being the ellipse, as you can see on the diagonal that it has a perfect correlation and it turns into a straight line, either facing upwards or downwards for negative correlation. When you modify the type argument, you can change the full correlation matrix into an upper or lower one. And the tlpos argument allows you to put the text on different sides of the chart. By default, it will label the top and the left area of the chart. If you choose type upper, by default, you get the label on the diagonal and the top. And for lower, by default, it will be on the left and the diagonal and the other options you see in the title of the chart. The next important argument you can change is the order, which groups variables according to their correlation. On the left column, you see the original order on top and alphabetical one below. In the top middle and right, you see order by angular order of eigenvector and first principal component. And in the bottom middle, you see hierarchical cluster with H cluster. And in the bottom right corner, I added two green rectangles with add rect equals two and with the rect call equals green I made the squares bright green. And now you can immediately see which variables are strongly positively correlated and cluster together. Let me cover a few more function arguments quickly to show you how you can get from the default chart on the left to the one on the right. Here I added the coefficient color in white. For number CEX I choose 0.8 to decrease the size of the number text and with number digits equals one you specify how many decimal numbers you want to plot. With diag equals false you can get rid of the diagonal which is always plus one. I also changed the background to gray and the outline of the circle to black otherwise it will take the color of the filling. The add grid color I set to white to get you white borders between the circles. A few more things you might want to change for example if you use type lower you can put the color legend position to B like bottom and here I introduced a color vector that I created with the color ramp palette function that goes from a dark red over red to yellow white light blue and dark blue so the cl.length equals 21 specifies how fine-grained the labeling of the legend is supposed to be if you change that to 11 you get fewer values and with the color function you can also reduce the number of color buckets that it creates so if you choose 10 instead of 20 you get fewer steps in between. 
You can create mixed correlation plots by first plotting the upper half, for example, and then using the same function again, but now add equals true and the lower half, and then you can choose a different method and it will add, for example, a pie chart. For these special cases, you can also choose the coreplot.mixed function where you can specify lower and upper within one function immediately. Next, I want to talk about the ggpairs function from the ggle package, which is a great option to build correlatograms. It gives you the density distribution of the single variables and also the scatter plot of the match of these variables. So sepal length on the x-axis and sepal width on the y-axis. Additionally, you get the correlation coefficient and significance levels indicated by these stars. So now you would see that overall sepal width and sepal length is not correlated, but that's only half of the story story because the ggpairs function allows you to include ggplot code, for example the aesthetics mapping to the species column. And what this does is not only separating the distribution into the different species and coloring the points of the scatter plot, it also gives you correlation coefficients that are species specific. So the overall correlation in gray was not significant, but within each species you see that there's some correlation going on, sometimes stronger, sometimes weaker. So it offers you great details already with only a single line of code. Another very useful function from this package is the ggcore function and it visualizes correlation coefficient of all the variables. So you see for example that the weight and the mileage is negatively correlated. So the heavier the car, the fewer miles you get per gallon, but the number of cylinders and the displacement, so the overall volume of the car engine is very highly correlated along with the horsepower. It also offers you within the method to specify what you want to correlate to each other and how the correlation coefficients should be computed so you can easily change it from Pearson correlation to Candle or Spearman. And again, feel free to make use of the help function to find out what different options you have to modify the plot. For example, you can change the title of the legend, you can select how many bins you want to have, use a different color palette, change it from squares to circles, specify the maximum and the minimum size, and so forth. Moving on to the coregram function from the coregram package. So how can we improve this very basic correlatogram of the empty cars data set? For example, we can order the columns based on correlation or hierarchy and in the upper panel we can introduce pie charts. So now you already detect some sorts of patterns of highly correlated variables. The standard correlation method is Pearson correlation. And another thing we can do is actually look at the points of the distributions and create ellipses. And additionally on the diagonal we can add the min and the max. So for some of the variables that are 0, 1 coded that's all you get but now you can already see that there are 3, 4 or 5 gears, that the mileage goes from 10.4 to 33.9 and that you have 4, 6 and 8 cylinders. And the red line shows you the geom smooth linear model that goes through the scatter plot of the data. If you don't want to order the variables and don't want to display the upper part of the correlation plot, you can set these function arguments to null. Now we use different options for the panel, diagonal or upper or lower, and you can read up on those by using the apropos function on panel dot and then it will explain to you the different options you have with shade or pi points and ellipse and another one is the panel conf and panel density so now on the lower panel i have points giving you the distribution again in a diagonal i put the density and in the upper panel you get the correlation coefficients with 95 percent confidence intervals so this can be a useful feature when you have to report the correlation coefficient and in the last example i want to show you the panel bar option and how you can change the color with the call regions you can use the color ramp palette again to have dark green for positive correlation and brown for negative correlation and the bigger the bars are the closer the correlation coefficient goes to plus one or minus one now I want to show you the pairs panels and core plot functions from the site package. As always, feel free to make use of the help function to familiarize yourself with all the function arguments and default settings. If you use the pairs panels function on the iris data set, you get a scatter plot, a linear model, the distribution as a histogram and density function, and the correlation coefficients. Now let's go through a few of these arguments. For example, if you set the smooth to false, you won't get a fit to the points. If it's true, it draws a loose smooth. You can scale the correlation coefficient. If this is false, then they all have the same font size, but it can be useful to set it to true to ignore smaller correlation coefficients. If you set density to false, you get rid of the density distribution. Same as for ellipse, you can remove that. The method is 
Pearson correlation, but you can also use Spearman and Candle. You can choose the point character. And here you can also add the species information. So if you change the symbol 21, which is just a dot, to something that adds the iris species information, you turn some of them into squares, triangles, and diamonds. And you can also do that for the color with BG, handing over a color vector that gets reused based on the species information. You can visualize the different distributions in red, yellow, and blue. If you set linear model to true, you force it to be a straight line. You can choose to not show the correlation coefficients. You can jitter the points, use a different color for the histograms, add significance levels with stars, and choose whether you want to have a confidence intervals band for the linear model fit. If it's false, you get rid of it and it looks a bit cleaner. And you can also change the title of the chart with the main function argument. Next, I want to show you how the core plot function works, which is also part of the psych package. You just hand over the data set. You can specify how big the text is supposed to be. So what I did here now was to create a color palette that will be used based on three colors from red to blue over white in the middle and then with n equals five you specify how many color buckets you want to include if you ramp that up to 51 you get many more steps in between with 21 you will be able to differentiate it a bit better and you can actually specify the legend color range so if you want to go by default from minus one to plus one you can but if you don't have much negative correlation in your data set, you might want to set the lower boundaries closer to a value that reflects your correlation matrix. You can include the stars and remove the diagonal and with main add a title to your chart. Of course, you can also use the ggplot function and the geom tile to create a heat map of the correlation coefficients. But keep in mind that you first have to calculate the correlations between the different variables and then turn this into a long data format, which the ggplot function needs. So you can use pivot longer after turning the row names into a specific column and then excluding this from gathering the correlation matrix because this is your initial result and you want to transfer it into a long data frame. And then you can pipe this into the ggplot function where now the correlation coefficient or the value is used to fill the tiles with different shades of red or green, which you can specify with the scale fill gradient two function. Here you can also label the legend and choose limits. And I also added the geom text by rounding the value to two decimals and choosing the color white. And lastly, I found the chart correlation function in the performance analytics package, which produces a correlation plot with histogram density function and scatter plot of your data very quickly as well. I hope you now know that there are many easy ways to find patterns in your data and visualize correlations. This is a first step to selecting variables you might want to use for your linear models or to simply get a good overview of data sets you have not seen before. Thanks for watching and until next time here at the Data Digest.